Hello and welcome to another RPG Architect tutorial. My name is Bert and I am your host. Now if you watched the last video, you know we went over all the settings available to you when you first start your new project. Uh, today we're going to dive into the database and we're going to create our first map. So let's just jump right into it. So here we are with our blank project. Uh, right here, this big center area, this is our map editor. Up here we have our maps listed out, or we will when we create some. It's currently empty, obviously. Down here are map properties or map settings. We'll get into that later. Uh, over here we have, or we will have, map layers. And up here is where our tile sets will, will appear. But right now you can see there's nothing going on. In fact, there's nothing going on anywhere because we got to create it. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click over here. We are going to select new. And now we have new map zero. So we see these layers populated over here, but you might say, well, it's also, it still just looks blank. I don't see nothing. Uh, what you can do is come up here to editor and you can turn this grid on. Now we can see, oh, this is, this is where we can actually start putting in the map. You can also come back up to editor, go down to editor settings, click edit settings. And this preview border, it might not be red for you. It's, uh, I think I had to set it at some point, but you set your color here, preview border thickness. Just let's just bump that up to two, click okay. And now, even if we had the grid off, we can see that this is where, or we will be able to draw in our map. And this is 20 by 20, as we can see down here in our map properties, we got 20 by 20. And if we need a bigger map or a smaller map, we just click resize here. And let's just say 20, let's just say 30 by 20. Let me see, oh. So we made it 30 by 20, actually. I'm gonna bump it back down to 18, I guess, whatever. It doesn't matter, but you can see, so that's how we resize it. And it shows you what they're right there, what they are. You can also see right here it says tile set, but if we click on it, there's nothing there because we still have to create our first tile set. So in order to do that, we are going to come up here to tools. You can either click it and click database or you can click F8 like it shows there. It's a little hotkey. You will be using F8 a lot, trust me. So we're going to go into the database and you can see here's all kinds of stuff that we can get into with this engine. Here, let me go full screen, maximize. Uh, we got our characters, we got skills, items, maps, animations, statistics, enemies, user interface, battles, and system. And each one of those sections has a bunch of little options for you to get into. Uh, under video configuration here, this is where a lot of those settings we uh, chose in that first uh, video. This is where they all hang out. So remember I said that we'd be able to change them after the fact. Here, here they are. So if you want to turn 3D on, click that. Oops, sorry. Uh, there's that. Here's our height and our width and all, basically all the settings. So, but uh, just wanted to point that out since we were already there. Now, if we come up here and we click tile sets, you'll see that there's already one slot available. If we wanted to create more than one tile set, we come down here, click resize, and we change this number, and now you can see we have more than one slot. Uh, we're going to start with this first one, and you see over here we have animated tile sets, we've got terraforming tile sets, we've got structured tile sets, and we have normal tile sets. I'm going to go through each one of them, um, but first, first and foremost, let's give our tile set a name. We can call it anything we want. We can call it, uh, you know, uh, town. You can call it uh, cave. You can call it ground. I'm going to call it Gregory. Uh, <clears throat> so, our tile set Gregory. Let's start off with terraforming. So we'll click here in one of these slots. We'll start with the zero one. Come up here to image, click these three little dots, 
and it brings up this window. Now this is gonna come up whenever you are trying to add a character sprite or a tile sprites or tile set or whatever, tile sheet. Well, I couldn't think of the word, tile sheet. Um, you know, user interface stuff, anything that, any resources you wanna add, it brings this window up and then you assign them from here. <clears throat> and these, you know, they're all nice and organized and these correlate with, I'm gonna open up uh, my directory here, let me drag it over here. <clears throat> this is my greatest game ever made folder. This is what it created when I did a, a new project. It created this folder. Come in here, come to content, and see these folders here, these correlate with all this stuff. So if I go to tiles, you'll see, oh, I got Final Boss Blues, Time Fantasy Limited. Click on it, I got these two folders. So if you wanna add, if you're not using the the resources provided with Architect, what you would do is you would come to the content folder and just put them in their uh, correlating folder. You know, throw your music in here, throw your tiles in here, throw your sprite sheets in here, etc. Just wanted to go through that really quick. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. Uh, we are in tiles, we are on terraforming tiles. So we click Final Boss Blues, I'm gonna click uh, let's click this top one, and we see we got four options here, but we're gonna go with Terraform Ground. We're gonna click OK, and bam, we got ourselves our first uh, chunk of tiles. Uh, and just to show you, let's click OK. We see down here it automatically chose Gregory because that's the first one, so it's, um, you know, it just threw it up there. But you can see we got the two blank spots for those other ones we started to create. Uh, the nameless, nameless tile sets. We got our Gregory tile set though. And we come up here, and this one right here, if you mouse over, you can see uh, it says terraforming tiles. Click on it, and bam, we have our tile set. And if you, we got a little zoom bar down here, so you can zoom out if you want to, you can zoom in. And we can scroll through it. Very cool. And then just like you probably imagine, you click on whatever one you want to use. We'll just go with this grass. You come up here. We got our paintbrush. We got our paint bucket. We got a couple shapes. So they just they function exactly like you probably imagine. You can paint in there. You can fill it with the paint bucket. Uh, and grab another, let's grab this sand here. You can use these shapes to draw squares or circles. All these squares make a circle. Like and comment if you know that reference. Anyway, all right, so we're back on our Gregory tile set here. We're gonna come down to structure tile set and same thing. Up here, click the three little dots. Uh, Final Boss Blues, click Final Boss Blues again. Uh, we're gonna click structure, hit okay. Bam, we got our structure tiles. Now, these kind of function as their own terraforming auto tiles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the engine checks out what's up here in this top section, as well as what's down here in this bottom section, and they both terraform in their own way. It should be noted, though, that if you're doing a 3D project, you really, you only have to worry about drawing in these top bits. And what do I mean by that? Uh, well, let's click, let's click apply. We got our structural tiles here now. I'm gonna go ahead and do control S to save. All right, so what we're gonna do, we come over here and this block here, you see it says uh, structural tiles, click there, bam, we got those tiles we just added. Click on, you see how it separates? It's selecting the walls there. So this just draws like an auto tile of the walls. And you click on the top here, this is, like a terraforming auto tile of the roof. And so if I was doing a 2D project, which we are currently in, this would look fine. Let me go ahead and do, click up here this play button to run a test of the, of the game. Play. Oh, it opened up on my other screen. Hang on, let me come over here. You can see we've got ourselves a nice structure. I don't have a character sprite yet, so it just looks like you know, the camera panning around, but you see it's in there. 
Oh, and I, you know what? I skipped something. If you can't do that just yet, see this little icon here? Um, click this dragon up here. You right click set new game position i did this off screen and i just i just realized that's that determines where you start your your game anyway back to tiles click this green thing to switch back into tiles mode um and i want to show you what this does in 3d so i'm going to i'm going to click my eraser and i'm going to get rid of oops actually not not eraser let's just draw right over it let's get to Let's grab the sand again and just draw that. So now we just have the ceiling. I'm gonna come up to the database. I'm gonna go to video configuration. I'm gonna click enable 3D. Turn that on, apply, okay. We're gonna test it. It's opening in my other window again. Drag this window over. And you see it filled in all the wall information automatically. Pretty cool feature, I have to say. I, I think that's that's pretty neat. Anyway, okay, so that's just showing how structural tiles work in 2D and 3D. So I'm gonna open my database again by hitting F8. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn 3D off for right now. I might I'll probably turn it back on a couple times, but I'll go back to tile sets, Soul Gregory. Uh, Structural tiles. Okay, so unit height and wall height. Let me maximize. Wall height is telling the engine how tall these walls are. So this is 32 right here, this top square, and you can see the walls is uh, it's two 32 square blocks, so it's like 64 tall. Unit height multiplies the 3d heights by that unit so basically it's the height of the structure uh, when you draw them it'll be this number times this number so by leaving it at one and two uh, you get the height that I just showed you if I did you know two unit height it would be by just drawing the the roof there the building would be four tall etc but for right now i'm just gonna leave it at one click apply uh okay and then also one more thing i want to show you while we're here this option use diagonal edges when terraforming so if you turn that on what it does is it cuts the corners off of these tiles so let's leave that on let's look at what that does that's on it's mainly for 3d but it does render in 2d also but i'm going to show it to you in 3d so come back down to fid turn 3d back on apply okay i know i don't have to hit apply and okay but i just do it okay don't come at me um and we're just going to run a test and we're going to drag this over and you can see we got the corners cut off pretty neat and it also that affects the I know I don't have a character so you can't really see it but it, it does affect the collider so if I walk up against this wall I have a flat surface but then I can kind of the character can walk up along this edge here all right here I'm gonna draw a couple of quick structures for you really quick and a couple of quick real quick actually here let's come back up into tile sets and you see how we have three different spots here well what's useful about this maximize say you wanted to have a bunch of buildings in you know these couple styles but you wanted them to have a little variation to them let's click on here added that picture or that sprite sheet tile sheet again and let's say so this one actually let's let's make this one square and uh, this one have the edges off and also this one let's make it 
let's make it to where they're a little bit shorter. Okay. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, if we look on our structural tile set, what it's done, this building here I drew with the the tile sheet in the first slot. So it's, it's this one here. This is going to be square now, but if I scroll down, you'll see where it repeats. These ones are going to have the rounded or the, the corners cut off and they're going to be shorter. So I'm going to do a little square one here and this one's that size. Let's just hit play. And bam. So you see they're, they're shorter than that one at about half the size. The wall's kind of smushed down, but if you're, if you're going the other way, like you're expanding it, it you know, you won't get that. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead and close this. Um, I think that's everything I'd want to go over for structural right now. Yeah, okay, so now let's go over animated tiles. So same thing, we're gonna click the dots, we're gonna go to final boss, we are going to go to water lava, because I know this is an animated tile, we're gonna click OK, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more, I'm gonna come down to this spot, I'm gonna go to the dots, and this time I'm actually gonna go to the second one, open RTP, and I'm gonna grab this, just, just because, I'll show you in a minute. So, now, as the name implies, these tiles are going to be animated. Uh, let me go maximize again. So, unlike terraforming and structure, you have another option up here, which is frames and duration. It's exactly like you probably think. So this is the number of frames in the animation. I know for a fact that this one has three frames. So I'm gonna set it to three. And duration is exactly what it sounds like. It's how, how long does it take to cycle through each frame, right? In milliseconds. So I'm gonna put down, I'm gonna put down 200. So it's like two seconds to cycle through everything, right? Uh, so how do we know if this looks good? Do we just draw it in on our map and then have to run a preview or, or run a test run? Well, not exactly. See, over here we have show animation. See, the developer thought of this. So let's go ahead and click show animation. And it's animating, but it looks weird. Well, that's because this particular tile set is kind of like the others. It's ter it's uh it's like an auto tile. It terraforms when you when you uh, utilize it. So we're gonna click is terraforming, and you see it snap back. It's like oh that's. That's what you want me to do. And we click show animation. And it's hard to see, but the water is moving correctly now. You can see it's not jumping all over the place like, like this. Now this particular sheet is set up correctly. Uh, I'm gonna go down here to my second one. I got this one, I zoomed in just a bit, uh, but this will be a little easier for you to see. So we got frames, we got duration. This one is not a terraforming tile. These will just sit as they are, so we don't need to check that. If we click show animation, nothing happens because we didn't determine the amount of frames. And if you can see, I mean, it's listed out right here. There's four frames in these animations. So let's just set it to four. And you can see, I hope you can see, it's animated. And it's going a little crazy, so let's, uh, let's set it to 200. Bam, we got ourselves an animated tile set. So let's apply. Okay, I know I don't have to do it twice, but I do. And we have over here, terraf it's got it separated, right? So since we checked terraforming, these water ones are listed here. And for the flat non-terraforming animated tiles, they are listed out here. Right? So pretty, pretty, yeah. It's pretty easy. Pretty, 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 pretty easy. It's gonna draw some water in here. Not very good the way I did it, but whatever. Don't judge me. I wanna go over a couple more things with you real quick and then we'll get out of here. Um, we didn't touch on normal tile sets. 
normal tile sets don't have any special function to them. They are just, as you see them, that's that's what they are. So, but you have to resize and you have to add a couple for them to pop up. And you can have as many normal tile sets as you want. All right. So let's click on here. Let's go do the old dot trick, the old dot clickeroo. We'll do these. We'll do these stairs and stairs and roof structures. Click OK. And bam. These just, that's how you'll be able to use them. So I'm going to click OK. And you just can use any of these just as they are. Right? No special nothing. So if you have a bunch of little things that are like 32 by 32 or whatever dimensions your project is in, a bunch of like little flowers or whatever, you can use these normal ones, right? And just draw it in. Okay, pretty easy. Okay, let's just go over a couple more things and I swear I'll stop talking. Okay, so you can see we have these couple different options. We got backgrounds, we got collisions, we got layers and tags. Backgrounds, what it does, if you click on it, this uh, assigns a certain battle background to these kind of tiles. So you just kind of, you can mark them, you can mark specific tiles. Um, all I'm doing is right and left clicking. So left click to increase, right click to decrease. And so if you have, if you're in an area and you want, you have both of these tile sets in use in the area, but you want a certain battle background for this one, a different battle background for this one you just give them different uh, background numbers okay that makes sense collisions is just like a sound so if you want them to not be able to walk on this tile or say this is this one here whatever it is uh, you just turn the collision off for them right okay and again right click to turn it on or excuse me left click to turn it on right click to turn it off layers now if I click here, you can see there's these little up arrows, down arrows, and then off. Up, down, off. Um, when they're up, whatever layer you draw this on, it'll draw it on the next layer above. If it's down, next layer below. And so this is just kind of to try to help with workflow. Um, And if you say you were to have it up and you were to draw a bunch of this on, or let's say down, because it's just a solid black. Uh, if you were to draw it on here and so you had a bunch of them popping up on this lower two layer, and then you came back into the tile set and you turned it off and you drew more on the base layer, the ones that you drew in the base layer would stay there. The ones that you drew when they had the down arrows would stay on lower two. It doesn't. It's. It doesn't save it in the database. If that makes sense. It's just to help you as you're mapping things out. So that's what that does. And then tags is for. It's kind of like backgrounds to where you you put numbers on it. That's for adding uh, different. Um, functions of the tile so you can you can uh, have it interact with variables or, or whatever like so if say this tile if you step on it you take some damage you can do it that way or if you step on this tile and you're slipping and sliding around because it's ice then you can you know set a tag and then call it via the tag pretty cool and that's all comes into play with this other option over here we won't get into that today I've already gone on way too long um, but yeah that's that's tiles man um, good old Gregory he's we're gonna get some uh, gonna get some mileage out of him hey thank you again so much for watching uh, I hope you've learned something with architect today I'm trying to go super in-depth with all the functions here um, rather than just kind of surface level quick explanations and not really explain why the things function the way they do. So I hope I hope that you learned a bit about the tile sets today. Uh, please like the video if you did, leave a comment if anything, you know, didn't make sense or or if you want to tell me 
you know, I'm, I'm great, please do that. If you want to tell me I'm terrible, you know, don't. I'm, I'm just kidding. If I'm doing, if I'm terrible, please, please tell me. Help me to improve. Help me help you. I want to do the best I can with these tutorials, and I need to know if my teaching method, if I'm, if, if it's working for you, and if it's not. So, please let me know if there's ways that I can improve with these tutorials. If there's anything that wasn't clear, uh, I can make an addendum or a short or something to clarify that kind of thing. Uh, please sign up for the mailing list. You'll find a link to that in the description. Join the Discord, subscribe to the channel, do all the things. Oh, and I just want to mention one more thing really quick. If you've enjoyed the music that you've heard in this video and you'd like to use it in your own RPG Architect game, you can do so by becoming a supporter of mine over at patreon.com slash bitbybitsound. I've got literally hundreds of songs over there and I add two more each week to the archive. So if you want to support me in my work, that's a great way to do so. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.